Hello, everyone, and welcome to Blip on the Radar. This is the pop culture blog where I will be reviewing movies, uh, music, television, books sometimes, maybe on occasion I'll review non-pop culture things like I'll see a really cool tree and want to talk about that. Uh, but today is uh, the day where I'm going to be reviewing Oceania, which is uh, the brand new album by the Smashing Pumpkins. A lot of these bands have kind of either come back or tried to recapture some of that glory, and the Smashing Pumpkins have certainly done that controversially, as uh, leader Billy Corgan has, you know, got rid of the rest of his original band and, you know, replaced them with these new people. And that's been something that's kind of turned a lot of people off, I think, of, you know, giving this new version of the Smashing Pumpkins a chance. And understandably, because, you know, since the band disbanded after uh, the two Machina albums, the the uh, interim and then uh, the band's reforming has not really been as strong as it was originally. Uh, the album Zeitgeist, which was the 2007 comeback, was really, you know, a generic rock album. It didn't really hold together thematically. It didn't really have a sense of progression to it, and the production was just horrible. Um, since then, you know, the Pumpkins have kind of had a lot of uh, not especially goodwill towards them from the fan base. Billy Corgan's been saying a lot of stupid things in public. That's not been helping. But, you know, there's always kind of a segment of this audience, myself included, which is interested in, in hearing what the band does next. Um, so Oceania, which is released today, is the kind of comeback that I feel people have been waiting for. It, uh, unlike Zeitgeist, um, it kind of feels very cohesive as an album. Now, Oceania is being sold as, you know, part of this longer album, Tear Garden by Kaleidoscope. And Tear Garden by Kaleidoscope uh, is 44 tracks, apparently. And it's a project that began a couple years ago where uh, Corgan and his band would release one song at a time as it was finished. And this would kind of go on until the 44 songs were done. Well, it got really annoying because the breaks between the songs were about like six weeks, I think. And people got fed up with it. I think Corgan himself got fed up with it. Uh, I feel that he's saying that, you know, uh, Oceania is part of Tear Garden just to kind of like fulfill his obligation. I don't really think it is. I think it stands as its own album. And, you know, if he probably could really have his way, he'd just like, you know, be done with Tear Garden and forget he ever said that he would finish that project. The new band that uh, Corgan's put together here sounds uh, really kind of excited and energized to be here. Um, and that kind of helps give the album the enthusiasm that it needs that I think has been sort of missing from the last couple Pumpkins releases. And here, he, the whole thing's sort of built around this theme of being lost, lost in love, kind of like trying to find your way. And that kind of helps the album be very listenable. It's, it's a compulsive album, and it's easy to get through. I think what sort of is going to turn some people off of it and what separates it from the classic releases like Siamese Dream or Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness is that there's not really too much that stands out in terms of, you know, pop songs that really grab you. Uh, the album kind of plays as an extended jam session in a way. It's like the Smashing Pumpkins equivalency of a Tool album. And that's not a bad thing because the musicianship is so good. Um, that, you know, it, it satisfies and that it has the elements that people like to hear in Pumpkin songs, even if it doesn't really kind of have the vocal or the, the lyrical hooks that, that uh, would really kind of otherwise stand out. Um, now, now, there's a bit of inconsistency throughout the record itself, which is that track nine is a song called Pale Horse, and it is so good um, that... The rest of the album almost kind of hurts in a way that you listen to it and like, well, why aren't these songs as good as that one? It's just kind of that succession of notes in, in Pale Horse, and you'll know when you hear it, it kind of really um, grab you in the way that uh, the good the good Pumpkins tracks used to. Whereas it was kind of, it's pop music, but sort of taken to this, you know, emotional, transcendent level. The rest of the record... You know, it gets by because 
you know, it, it, it weaves that atmosphere that people like from the pumpkins, that sense of kind of yearning and longing and um, optimism kind of, you know, intercrossed with dissatisfaction, which is a very teenage emotion. Um, and the pumpkins kind of play off teenage emotions. They always have. But Pale Horse, um, as well as a song called Pinwheels, uh, both really kind of work, I think, because Corgan's shaking it up a bit. He's, he's you know, you know, sharing his, his vocal harmonies with uh, the b bass player Nicole Fiorentino, who is the latest in uh, getting kind of a long line of uh, female bass players that Corgan hires. Um, so I think Oceania is, you know, it's not a classic album. It's not melancholy. It's not Siamese Dream. But it's an enjoyable record, and it's a solid record. Um, so I think like Pumpkins fans are going to be satisfied with this, as well as you know maybe bringing in some newcomers who've kind of felt a little embarrassed with hearing Zeitgeist. I'm going to give Oceania a rating of B for the first ever episode of Blip on the Radar. I'm Mark Palermo. Good night.